I call to order the October 16, 2017 meeting of the Board of Selectmen. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to, to the, the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. First item of business, approval of minutes of September 25, 2017 regular meeting. Mr. Chair, I yes. move we approve the minutes of the September 25, 2017 regular meeting as submitted. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Abstain. Abstention for uh, Jeff. Thank you. Just past the hour of 7 p.m., we have board discussion regarding recreational marijuana to discuss the opt-out option which would, in effect, ban the establishment of recreational marijuana and other related activities in the town. Kathy Jubert, town planner. Welcome, Kathy. Hello. Good evening. Hi, Kathy. And I would just like to preface this, um, just to be clear, this agenda item is, a pu is part of the public meeting but not posted as a public hearing. On the agenda, we do have a regular item for public comments, and anyone who has a, a desire to express their concerns or opinions about this topic, we will entertain those comments at that portion of the agenda. So, okay. Hi, Kathy. Thank you for having me. Sure. Um, what I just want to do tonight is um, reference the memo that I had prepared for the board um, that um, I believe was in your packets over the weekend, mm -hmm. and um, just hit on some of the um, highlights of the state statute in the state process, and then we can get into a little bit more detail about North, you know, specific for North Row. Um, as people may or may not be aware, um, it was back in um, July 28th of 2017 that the governor signed a, some are calling it a compromise bill, some are calling it a revised bill, but the bill that we have um, in effect right now that was based in part on the uh, ballot vote that, you know, the statewide ballot vote in November of 2017. So in July uh, 2017, uh, Governor Baker signed an act to ensure safe access to marijuana. And basically that is what is the recreational marijuana statute for the um, state of Massachusetts. Um, we'll get into the two different avenues of how a town can um, uh, legislate that or regulate that, um, but I'll do that in, in a couple of minutes. Um, ba so based on the, the bill that was signed into effect, um, August 1st, 2017, which has already passed, um, there was a deadline for the Cannabis Advisory Board to be created in Massachusetts. And again, they're an advisory board to the Cannabis Control Commission, um, which was later appointed. So the advisory board had to be in place by August 1st, and that's a 25-member board. And then come September 1st of 2017, that is when the Cannabis Control Commission, which is a five-member board um, appointed by various uh, state departments, Attorney General's Office, Governor's Office, uh, several other offices. Uh, the Cannabis Advisory Board is the, uh, excuse me, the Cannabis Control Commission is the board that is going to um, develop the regulations for the state of Massachusetts. Uh, they are um, on a schedule right now that's been outlined um, under the statute by uh, March 15th of 2018 is their first sort of target date that they need to hit or are supposed to hit, and that's when they're supposed to have regulations developed um, th that will guide, you know, not only the, the state offices, uh, but also obviously the um, cities and towns in Massachusetts. So right now there aren't any regulations in place. Um, we're all waiting for the Cannabis Control Commission to come up with those regulations. Um, assuming that they meet their March 15th deadline, um, uh, April 1st is then the next deadline, April 1st, 2018, and that's when the commission can begin accepting applications for licenses. So they're going to be responsible for issuing licenses um, much as right now the Department of Public Health is the state agency that was issuing licenses for medical marijuana. This Cannabis Control Commission is who's going to be issuing licenses for recreational marijuana establishments. 
So they have, again, another deadline. April 1st is when they can begin accepting applications for the licenses. And then as of June 1st, 2018, is when they may, may begin to issue licenses. Um, as far as the um, town and how the town fits into this whole process, um, as you um, are aware, at the last town meeting, the April 2017 annual town meeting, the uh, planning board proposed um, a temporary moratorium um, so that the town uh, could you know study and and you know come up to speed and and hopefully develop regulations for um, a proposal at this town meeting. You know typically we just work town meeting to town meeting. So the uh, moratorium was put in place um, until June 30th, until just the end of the fiscal year. So June 30th, 2018 is when our moratorium here in Northbow expires. So what we need to do is have in place, um, regardless of what the what the bylaw is and 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 you know how this all turns out, we need to have some we need to present something at town meeting, um, either to regulate this or to opt out. Um, again, I'll go into a little bit of detail about that. But so we need to um, right now how we have ourselves set up is we need to act um, before that June thirtieth. 2018 moratorium for ourselves, for the town of Northboro. So in, in between all of this, as everybody, and I mean the Attorney General's office, town council, um, uh, you know, communities, um, uh, cities, uh, uh, planning associations, managers associations, as we're all trying to figure out, you know, how, how we go through this process, Copeland and Page, um, our uh, town council, has um, put forth a couple different memos. The most recent one was in August of 2017. And what they're recommending in there, they've outlined um, if the community is, an, is a no community, and Northboro is a no community, meaning that um, more people voted against recreational marijuana at the question four last year than people did for it. So as a no community, the town has the ability to call what's opt out of the <coughs> marijuana, um, of recreational marijuana. And so the, um, the towns who have voted no can go to, uh, the, actually town council is recommending that there's two articles relating to opting out, if that's how we choose to go, that there would be a board of selectmen general article, which would be um, obviously a non-zoning bylaw. So it would be um, uh, you know, placed into our general code probably into the administration section, but we're not you know, sure just about that yet. But the, um, the, so the selectmen would vote to opt out and then um, assuming that the planning board would follow suit, the planning board would also vote to opt out and um, create a bylaw, a zoning bylaw that would be to opt out. Town Council very nicely has provided us um, uh, model language um, that we can use and revise and you know however we see best fit but um, so they provide us a language to to do two to do the two opt-outs they've also suggested that even if we decide if if the community puts forth or if the boards put forth an article or the two articles to opt out that we should also have a fallback position in the event that those articles you know you always take this chance at town meeting that in the event that the articles weren't approved, the opt-out articles weren't approved, that we should have an article then also ready to regulate recreational marijuana. And by regulating it, it means giving it, I keep telling the planning board, it means giving it at home. Um, so we want to come up with a zoning bylaw um, very similar to what we did for medical marijuana, um, although that was um, not approved at uh, town meeting a couple years ago. But we would also propose a bylaw that basically regulated um, recreational marijuana, where it should be, what should the buffer zones be, you know, what kind of parking, um, every, everything that goes along with when you cite a use in the zoning bylaw. And the thing that's very different, um, that's very, very different about recreational marijuana um, is this particular statute was written that communities need to, if you, if you want to say no to recreational marijuana, you need to vote to, to do that opt-out. 
typically the way zoning works um, in Massachusetts is if you don't have the use listed in your uh, zoning table, whether it be recreational marijuana, whether it be a, a car wash, um, a, you know, a, um, a, a pizza shop. I mean, if, if you don't have it listed in your zoning table, then it means that it's not allowed. And that's it, that's the end of the discussion. Um, people could apply for a use variance, but typically the way Massachusetts general law works or zoning law works is if it's not in your table, then it's not allowed. But it's the reverse in this, in this um, legislation. They specifically wrote into the legislation that if you're silent on the use, then, it, then you're open to it. So that's why, again, I go back to town council recommending that you know, if we're gonna opt out, we have the two articles, the, the general and the zoning, and followed by an article that could essentially be passed over, but an article that would regulate it and um, assign it to a specific, you know, one zoning district, several zoning districts, however that's determined. Um, by the planning board with, you know, input, obviously, from other boards and staff. So that is, um, th those are the dates that, that we are aware of so far. Um, since the uh, legislation was passed, um, I've attended um, at least three meetings. Um, one of the planning board members has also attended at least two meetings that have been made available to people. Uh, made available to board members and staff. And um, uh, so and most recently, um, uh, October 3rd was a meeting that, or a workshop um, that I attended along with a planning board member that was put on by the Massachusetts Municipal Lawyers Association. And there they had um, someone from the Attorney General's office on the panel, um, a planner from one of the regional planning agencies, and then a, um, an attorney who represents a lot of his firm, not from Copeland and Page, but um, another law firm that represents a lot of municipalities in Massachusetts. So there were a lot of questions. There were more questions generated than answers. Um, obviously, everyone's waiting for uh, the Cannabis Control Commission to come forward with their regulations. And then on October 11th, um, I attended in Worcester a, a listening session um, that was put on by the Cannabis Control Commission. And they're holding a series of those. Um, I, I believe they conclude them next week. Um, but they've held, I think, 12 or 14 of them around the, uh, the state. And they are, they are pure listening sessions. They do not respond to any questions or concerns that are raised. Um, but it's the, the main purpose of those sessions are for, um, for any, any person to attend. It doesn't have to be a board member or a, um, uh, you know, a staff person. So there, again, there were a lot of questions that were generated at the, at the listening session that I went to. Um, which I'm, I'm fairly certain is going to be very representative of all the other uh, listening sessions, the, the same questions over and over. Um, uh, there, were, there were questions that certainly fell into the municipal realm and then questions that fell into people that were either very opposed <coughs> to the use or people that were, were interested in opening um, some sort of recreational marijuana establishment. So again, a lot of questions generated, not a lot of answers, uh, no answers at the listening session, but it was perfectly set up that way. So we will, um, I mean, as far as um, the information that I'm available to, to uh, I mean, that I have available to me, you know, any, any additional information, obviously, we'll, we'll continue to keep all the boards posted, um, you know, particularly the Board of Selectmen and the Planning Board. Okay. Um. I'm sure there's a number of questions <laughs> that we'll have and, and look for some clarification <clears throat> on. Um, what I'd like to do, I guess, if I could, is structure this a little bit to focus on a particular topic one at a time so we can fully discuss that and to some extent hopefully resolve it. Um, if that makes sense to the board? Sure. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So the first topic I guess I would like to address is the effect of the moratorium and to what extent uh, we have um, assurance from the state attorney general and from our town council that that moratorium protects us beyond the April 1st date when licensing applications are accepted mm -hmm. because according to the language of the law, uh, the bylaws in effect on the date a licensing application is submitted are the bylaws that apply with respect to that application. So clearly, with our annual town meeting not scheduled until late April, and this April 1st date preceding that, 
and our moratorium extending to the end of June, <laughs> there's some gray area in there, I guess, and I would like to know if we have, uh, to what extent we can rely on the moratorium to protect us so that we can make use of that time and that town meeting to enact whatever bylaws we choose to enact and that those bylaws will apply to licensing applications regardless of whether they're submitted before or after our, our date. Yeah, through the, through the chair, if I, if I may. Um, I knew that question specifically was going to come up this evening. There is in the packet a uh, legal opinion from town council that addresses that uh, directly, and I'll just read one line from it. It says, uh, we've taken the position that such a moratorium would serve as a, a stopgap prohibition on recreational marijuana establishments during its duration. This remains our view. So while this is uh, obviously a concern and a question, uh, as Kathy said, there are a number of dates that the Cannabis Control Commission has to hit. Um, if you read the paper, uh, the chairman of the commission has been out uh, in the last couple of weeks making statements like, um, you know, he has no staff, he has no budget, and he has no office space. And those dates, uh, those arbitrary dates that are contained in the legislation, um, they haven't they haven't waived those. So there's no chance we're going to meet them. But uh, I think the consensus is that's very it, it, it's very be very difficult for them given the fact that they don't have a budget staff and haven't even gotten going yet um, but more importantly you know town council has looked at this and taken uh, again provided a legal opinion that the moratorium is in place to protect the towns this is why Northborough and 101 other communities um, put the moratorium in place so that we have time to have a, a an informed deliberate discussion about how we'd like to approach this from a policy standpoint um, is there, uh, again, that's their opinion. Um, one of the things that we're looking for, and we anticipate this will come in the coming weeks, is some sort of direction from the Cannabis Control Commission in terms of whether or not we're going to meet the deadlines and whether or not, in their opinion, the deadlines would um, short-circuit 101 communities that put a moratorium in place would short-circuit them by a matter of a couple of weeks. Is it possible? Yeah, anything is possible. <coughs> is it likely? Uh, again, town, town council's position is the moratorium is in place. They believe it protects us. And until we get some very clear direction from the commission once they get going that they intend to meet that and their intent is that that will run roughshod over the communities that have a moratorium, um, then the answer, is, the answer is no, we're not worried about that April 1st deadline right now. If somewhere along the line uh, we do get some information that that date is critical, at that point the town would have the option, of course, to call a special town meeting. But everybody's in, unless you have a fall town meeting and sometimes have a spring and a fall town meeting, we only have a spring town meeting. That's just how we're structured. Um, unless you have a fall town meeting, everybody's sort of in a holding pattern right now waiting for that, for that clarification. So. Uh, again, town council's opinion, as stated in, in the letter that's included in your packet, is they believe that moratorium it protects the town and uh, absent some additional information uh, which would be forthcoming, um, they're standing by that opinion. Okay. Jeff? Yeah, question, I'm not sure if this is for John or Kathy, but I mean, is it clear that the commission has the authority to move the April 1st date? The, the dates aren't... aren't part of the statute okay. so that's where um, we believe and not just we meaning Northboro or John and I mm -hmm. um, but that's where we believe that they're they they may or may not meet those deadlines I mean we, we have to I think we have to go forward assuming that they're going to meet those deadlines but but they're not in the statute they were um, you know guidelines to them that these are the dates that that we want you to meet so just sure. so I guess kind of as a follow-up so I don't want to call it an arbitrary date but it sounds a bit arbitrary um, we have this April 1st date uh, I guess what what is there in the law or in you know currently in place now that that makes that date you know defensible you know really makes it a, a <coughs> kind of a gate post <coughs> What is there in the in the present? Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> we keep talking about this April first date, but I'm trying I'm trying to figure out in my head what what you know what authority lies behind that date, if 
you know, if it's not in the, you know, what was passed, and I mean, is it just something they came up with? And yeah. well, I, I actually myself, I don't know if it was the if it was the governor that came up with it or if it was the um, treasurer's department um, that came up with it, because this is all coming under the the, the state treasurer now. Okay. Um, but I know that the that the reason for the dates was that is that people were very dissatisfied with how long it took to um, sort of roll out medical marijuana. And, um, and it, that turned into about a two-year process before we had any um, you know, sound regulations coming from the Department of Public Health in Massachusetts. But they have, they have the authority, though, to delay, I guess, you know, when they're going to start accepting applications. Is that? I don't think that there's any penalty in place for the Cannabis Control Commission that if they don't meet those deadlines, then then they're, it's going to be overridden and you know it's a it's a free for sure. Yeah, you know, I, can, I can see this playing out. That you know it seems like it's so right now it's pretty nebulous as far as where the authority truly lies. Yeah, we have this commission and everything, but really, do they have you know I don't want to call it the line item veto, but yeah. you know. If I may, through the chair, uh, sure. it, 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 it's almost a, a, a irrelevant. All we need to know as a community is, uh, are they going to meet the date, and is the date meaningful, or is it not, so that we can act accordingly, and because we want to make sure, no matter what avenue the board pursues, that we don't, we don't lose our ability to take action by virtue of, of, of this and date. I, I think that's yeah. kind of what we're That's really the key here. And right now, and right now, uh, based on town council's opinion, is they believe the moratorium it rules and is in place. And uh, if, again, we get some, some information contrary to that, then we would, we would act accordingly. Okay. Bill? I just have a clarification. So if we go to town meeting with the, with the bylaw and it passes, does it have to go to a vote yeah. to solidify it? No, a ballot vote is not necessary in Northborough. Because Northborough is what's considered a no community, again, the majority of people, um, the, the vote actually was 4,531 people voted no in Northborough, 4,440 voted yes. So because more people voted no, we're considered a no community, and you just need to go to town meeting. If we were a yes community, you need to go to your town meeting and also have a uh, ballot. That, you know, have a have a question at your um, next. That was a concern of mine because I was nervous. If it passes a town meeting, then it goes to the ballot. It might not pass at the ballot. Yeah, so. no, there's there's not a ballot needed okay. for some some towns that, <clears throat> that if I could sure. that voted no, um, did you know Westboro is is the example everyone's using. Westboro was you know way ahead of everybody, and and before we even knew whether you needed to have an election or excuse me, you know, have a ballot question and or go to town meeting. Westboro did both just to cover themselves. But it has since been, you know, stipulated from the attorney general's office that, you know, and then down, you know, through town councils that if you're a no community, it's going to town meeting is what um, is the path that you need to take. No elect, no, no ballot question. You know, everything we do, we always have information or we have a process. It kind of, it's kind of like we have to wait for the state again to like come up with another date is it is the april 1st is that a real date or i know we'll act on upon it when we we find out but it's just it's like at the last minute you know it's it's it's, it's the only date we have at the yeah. moment so yeah uh don sorry um kathy you said if, april if 1st I, um, i'm sorry if i could um I, i'd like to keep the focus of this portion of it on the effect of the moratorium or what we need to do with respect to the more just Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. The moratorium is part of this question. Yeah. Um, April 1st, you said that they could begin accepting applications, and they wouldn't start issuing until June 1st. Meanwhile, we have the moratorium in place, but also during that period, we have a town meeting. So having the moratorium and then having the town meeting, don't zoning laws become, if they're voted favorably at town meeting, whether it be to opt out or not, they become immediately... Um, Yes, they're effective, effective the night right. that, it's, that, that it's voted on at town meeting. So by this time frame, they wouldn't have issued any anyway. So if we vote at town meeting, 
essentially was saying no, and that should be enough, no? I think ordinarily that's, that's exactly how we would proceed um, because anytime we've done, because we've done temporary moratoriums in the past and, um, and it was very clear as it is to town council today, it's very clear that the moratorium in effect protects us until that moratorium expires. And um, so, it, so, so we absolutely could go down that, the, the path that we would normally go down. Um, you know, present something at, at the annual town meeting. It would be effective, whatever the vote was, it would be effective that, that night. Um, and then, you know, obviously as soon as the town adopts a regulation, the moratorium is, is over. So there's no, you know, gray area between our April town meeting and, and June 30th. But, but there is, people have raised a lot of questions about is, is the town, even though the town has adopted a moratorium, is the town covered? And, and again, that goes back to John. We've asked town <clears throat> council that and, um, and they've you know, answered that we are covered by the present moratorium. Thank you. It, yeah, but I mean, the town council is clear. The moratorium stands unless, unless there's a very clear message otherwise. And right now there's, there's been no clear message. So the recommendation is to stay the course. And if we get some other information somehow that this April 1st date is valid and same, th all, these are all good questions. These are all the questions that the, uh, the listening sessions that the <laughs> Cannabis Control Commission is having. Probably the biggest question they're getting is, look, are any of these dates real? And for 100 communities plus that have a moratorium, you know, what is your intention with regard to these? So they're going to have to, in my opinion, that's going to be one of the first things they're going to have to address uh, when they get operational. Yes, yeah, more of a comment. I just think that, uh, first of all, I hope that the moratorium prevails and negates the need to have a special town meeting. It seems silly that they would stick with an April 1 date knowing full well that that many cities and towns would have to have a special town exactly. meeting and spend upwards of nine to $10,000 to do that. We know that's how much it costs. So it almost seems like kind of what I would call a uh, kind of a jerk move. <laughs> In these days of budget constraints, to have an arbitrary date like that and force towns to, to spend that kind of money. So that's just, just a comment on that. I think one thing I'd like to express is that yeah. um, although it's been stated in effect that the moratorium holds unless we learn otherwise, it concerns me that um, potentially the Cannabis Control Commission can issue regulations that circumvent the intent of moratoriums. I, I find it difficult to believe that they would have that authority considering that the moratoriums were put in place specifically to allow towns to take their time to understand what the law is and then to formulate the appropriate bylaws according to their preferences for their own community. So if that is the, um, I don't know how to put it, I, I guess what I'm saying is Although that may be the case that the moratorium holds unless CCC somehow communicates otherwise, I would feel much more comfortable if the CCC and the AG could independently confirm and our town council could confirm and reinforce the fact that the moratoriums, you know, hold throughout the duration and no, uh, no other language of the law, for example, the bylaws in effect on April 1st, uh, will override uh, that, that ability. So uh, the question I would have is whether we um, can inquire to the Attorney General um, or to whatever authority can provide that answer as soon as possible um, and give us some assurance because I think it's, it's, it's difficult to, you know, um, if there's compelling long history of case law for moratoriums, for instance, that demonstrate that, you know, that is, is the effect, then uh, I'd certainly feel more comfortable knowing that and proceeding on that basis. Um, I, I would just say that that's the exact question everybody's already asked. Yeah. So that's yeah. exactly what we've all, we're all waiting to get that, that feedback. So the question is, you know, towns are like, look, if I need to have a special town meeting, just tell me. Mm -hmm. And so um, if, and 
we're at the point now where we don't need to make that decision to have a special town meeting. We're waiting. The questions have been asked. Mm -hmm. They've been posed to those bodies, and we're waiting for them to respond, and then we can react uh, accordingly. So again, you know, if needed, that would be something that I believe we would pursue if we want to protect our, our uh, ability to, to opt out. Um, I don't think that we want to, we want to make sure that we don't have a, 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 a date that make something happen based on a technicality. I think we're all clear uh, about right, that. Right. But your frustration, this is, this is exactly the yeah. conversation we've been having for months and same questions have been asked. The AG's office is looking for the commission to give them some intent, you know, they're, they're, everybody's looking at each other and the Cannabis Control Commission is just, as I said, getting up and running and they need a budget, they need staff, they need office space right. so they can get going, so. Okay. Um. Are there any other questions concerning the specifics of a moratorium or the effect of a moratorium? Uh, if not, um, I guess the next topic I would like to focus on would be the effective date of any bylaw adopted by the town because I think there's some concern or, 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 uh, or perhaps misunderstanding of that issue with the, um, with the Procedure to enact a bylaw and the effect, the effective date that that bylaw um, is 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 held. So, Kathy, could you sure some? It, um, regarding zoning, um, any zoning bylaw that's adopted at town meeting is effective immediately. And um, just to sort of reconfirm that, um, there's a um, what's called a planner's listserv that all the municipal mi municipal planners partake in, and there's. Um, uh, members of various state agencies that, that also participate on it. And on a completely separate subject, it was not recreational marijuana, but it was about the effect of another, some other type of zoning that a lot of people, are uh, communities are working on right now. And, the, um, and just over the past couple of weeks, the, the, the question has been, when does you know, a zoning bylaw become effective? And, and it's confirmed, as it always has been in this community, that it's the uh, night of, the, the date of town meeting. Um, after that, and this is where some confusion may come in, uh, there is statutorily the Attorney General's office. We ha we provide all of our um, zoning, but you know, uh, bylaw information to the Attorney General's office, the, the municipal law unit specifically, and they have um, up to 90 days to review the um, all the zoning submissions from the um, you know every community in Massachusetts. And, uh, and then they issue a letter saying whether they um, approve or um, approve part of it or disapprove your bylaw. But the, in between the date of town meeting and the date of um, the, the receipt of the Attorney General's office, that bylaw is in effect immediately. And so if the Attorney General's office, and we've never had it happened in Northborough, knock on wood, um, but exactly. <laughs> um, the, uh, if, if in fact the Attorney General's office negated um, a zoning bylaw, then it, the day that we receive that letter, um, because it gets date stamped in the town clerk's office, that's the date that we revert back to whatever the bylaw was in place prior to the town meeting vote. So there is a, you know, there's an area in there that, you know, people, um, you know, if, if they, for some reason, if they think it's, you know, it's it's not going to be vetted properly through the AG's office. Mm -hmm. But every zoning bylaw that goes to town meeting has been reviewed and revised and um, rehashed by yeah. by our attorneys. Yes, could would you care to make a? I, I just want to make your comment yeah, to that. Yeah. Basically, that's why we have the process that we have. That's why we figure out what we want, where we want to go from a policy standpoint. We ask council, we work with council to draft something, it goes back. If necessary, council will then actually talk to the AG's office if they have a question about whether or not uh, the AG would have an opinion on something. So when we go to town meeting, we've got a bylaw that we're, we're sure is going to pass with no issue at the attorney general's office. You know, the only issue is sometimes if you get a citizen's petition where they don't have the benefit of maybe all that legal process and you miss something, that's why we always go through the process that we do. We make sure that we've got a bylaw that um, that's going to uphold on the on the other side when it comes out, and that's critical to part of what we're doing here tonight. Uh, so I just want to make that point. Okay, uh, Bill. We have to do two different. Uh, we have to do a uh, general legislation from the selectmen, and also a bylaw from the zoning board. Right. 
So it's actually two pieces. Now, does town meeting vote on our legislation or is it yep. on both pieces? Yep. And it's because of the ambiguity in the law, whether or not you prohibit or opt out through a general bylaw or a zoning bylaw. So town council saying belts and suspenders do both so that you're sure you got it covered. That's why we're doing it, because of the ambiguity in the law. That's why you would do both. Otherwise, normally, you'd only need one. Okay. And, and both articles would be the exact same. Right. Right back exact, to back on the... And the exact same language. It would just, we would just insert it into different sections. Zoning would be Chapter 7. Right. As I said, Board of Selectmen is probably Chapter 2. Well, that's what we, we need but, to figure out where it fits right, into. But it would, that's one of the things we need to do so okay. that when we go to town meeting, we know exactly where it's going to fit into our, into our code. Okay. okay. Jeff? So, Kathy, just for so people understand, for a zoning bylaw, it takes a two thirds. Yes, it's a two thirds vote. Yeah, and now with the the sister uh, motion there, would that also take a two thirds? Simple majority. Okay, that's what I thought. General that's, bylaw, simple majority. Right. Yep. Yep. Just a uh, this relates to the general bylaw that that the selectmen would potentially be putting together. Um, at some point, we may be discussing prohibiting necessary, or excuse me, accessory marijuana paraphernalia, and adding that language to any opt-out language. Does that and can that include head shops? Where does that fit into that definition? Yeah, I, I can address that through the chair. Um, so one of the things that that. Uh, Kathy and I were going to bring up this evening is if you if you do if if the if you do want to move in the direction of opt out, you know, what are the things that we want to see included in there? Uh, one of them is a potential to um, prohibit accessories, and so one of the things that we need to do is make sure that we have a clear definition of those accessories in the bylaw itself. Yeah. Uh, that's one of the things we've discussed with town council. Um, so first. You need to decide if that's something that if if you're interested in opting out and b if you want to include accessories and paraphernalia then that would be the direction given to town council they would structure and and, and work uh the we have model we have a model as kathy said a model uh, bylaw that's mm -hmm. out there mm -hmm. but it's not specific to right. northborough so right. we need to make it specific to us what is it that we want to see as a community what is your policy direction that's one of the items so if that's something you want uh, that would be the direction we'd give council to make sure that that's included in there and defined appropriately so that it can be enforced. Okay, so we can customize it mm -hmm. yes. uh, as per our discussions and yes. make sure that whatever words are in there, um, it's defined clearly mm -hmm. so that there's no ambiguity about whether or not those kind of shops are allowed to be here. Yep, right. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Thank you. If I could just reemphasize briefly. Um, as far as the effective date of a bylaw is concerned, it's the effective date of the town meeting vote. The 90-day AG approval period doesn't have any bearing on the effectiveness of the bylaw, and there's no need to consider that 90-day period as a driver of the timeline we should follow in order to move through the process. And, correct. And, and, yep, correct. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Any other comments on the effective date of bylaw? Um, shall we discuss? Uh, components of the bylaw. Um, Leslie has uh, already mentioned accessories and paraphernalia, but there are a couple other considerations that I think we want to uh, perhaps entertain. Um, one is, uh, is the prohibition of a use variance that would counteract the intent of the bylaw. If we put in place a bylaw that prohibits in full a particular use, does the Zoning Board of Appeals still have the authority to hear arguments and issue a use variance that would override that? It, we've spoken to town council about this. And um, ordinarily, when you, uh, uh, ordinarily in, in Northboro, our zoning bylaw allows use variances, um, meaning that they're not automatically granted, but that if a use is prohibited in the use table, and somebody still wants to pursue that use, they can go to the Zoning Board of Appeals and ask for a use variance. And um, in this particular case, we did ask town council for an opinion about that. And you, we can insert specific language into just this section of the bylaw, which would um, prohibit somebody seeking a use variance. So if, if, we, if the town of Northboro prohibited recreational marijuana in that same bylaw 
we can put a, 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 a section, a, a sentence, whatever it, it turns out to be, but we can add that language to the bylaw that it, it prohibits somebody from um, getting a use variance, from, from even okay. applying for a use variance. Okay. We certainly want to ensure that the action we're taking to impose the bylaw in the first place isn't subject to any kind of... Uh, yeah. So we've, we've, we've checked and we'll double check, but I mean, we certainly, they'll check our language for us. Yeah. But we... No, it's, it's clear, it's clear that, that, that you can do it and, and you may want to do it to, to plug all the holes. But again, we want to make sure that town council reviews the language to make sure that it's included in the right spot with the right language to accomplish that. Yes. Having language in there that hasn't been approved by council doesn't necessarily accomplish that. Right. Um, any other comments? Um, Bill? I just want to make sure that if we do craft the bylaw that it, it covers everything that, you know, we want to have covered. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Whether it's the, the head shops and all the different uh, avenues that we're going to opt out we, to opt out completely. You know what I mean? Yeah. And not leave any uh, loopholes. Mr. Mr. Chairman, if I, if I may, sure. I just, as staff, I need we're looking for clear direction. We're talking about specifics of a bylaw, but we haven't discussed as a group, do you want to opt out? Well, I, I yes, yeah, so I, 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 I know I, we're I talking, feel like about, we're talking about specifics, right. but you know, which are moved unless we're going to get to, I, I guess I, I would, I wanted to I know a get through some of the process. Process. get through some of the technical <laughs> okay. information following this Fair enough. very <laughs> technical and dry discussion. <laughs> It is my intent to ask each of the board members and provide myself my opinion okay. on, on, on the leaning of the board. And trying to figure out where we're going. Try to give, well, <laughs> yes, I, I, there are a lot of these kinds of details, and I guess I want to be clear about uh, Fair enough. an understanding of all these details uh, in, in addition. Um, uh, there's one additional thing, I think, that we need to consider, and that would be the treatment of medical marijuana. Um, the state law, I think in part or predominantly concerns recreational marijuana. At the moment, we don't have any zoning bylaw or controls over medical marijuana. Is correct. that correct, Kathy? Okay. We addressed that at, was that two town meetings ago? Yeah. Um, but that motion failed, and so there are no restrictions or controls on that. Correct. Um, could you give us some information about how medical marijuana is referred to or treated in the context of this recreational marijuana law? Um, would, you like me, would you like me to respond to that? We, we, can, we can try, uh, because we're trying to get a handle on that ourselves. Yeah. Um, the, right now, there's, there's a separate law that, that pertains to, to medical marijuana, um, dispensaries and cultivators in Massachusetts. Um, but it's, it's all indications and in all of these, you know, um, uh, learning sessions and listening sessions that the medical marijuana is being rolled into the recreational marijuana um, statute. But we, we do have confirmation from town council that if, if the town wanted to ban um, medical marijuana, we can do that as part of this bylaw. So you, you could ban, I suppose you could have a second bylaw also if you wanted to separate it out but but basically they've indicated to us that you can in the same bylaw you can put forth that you're banning recreational marijuana and medical marijuana and the um and the 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 it, what that would allow a, a you know us to do is to again take that step back wait to see what the Cannabis Control Commission comes up with ways to see how they, you know, um, uh, uh, sort of dovetail in medical marijuana. If the town wanted to, you know, reconsider it at a later time, we can always, you know, sort of, uh, um, you know, separate out medical marijuana and bring that back to a town meeting if, if, you know, people wanted to take a second look at that. But town council has told us that we can include both prohibiting medical and recreational marijuana. Okay. John? One more clarification on that. So some of our neighboring communities that acted to ban recreational marijuana ahead of us, where we chose to take a moratorium, to, uh, have a moratorium and, and, and see how things develop, 
uh, at that point, they might have banned recreational marijuana, but they did not have the authority to ban medical. So they actually have medical allowed, and they have to regulate it through zoning in terms of, as Kathy mm -hmm. said, for it to find a home. That's no longer the case now. The lines between medical and recreational marijuana have been blurred, and I think the best way to express that is um, if you had, if, if a town had uh, allowed medical marijuana and some communities got into you know, host agreements and, uh, and, um, uh, and uh, allowed a dispensary for medical marijuana only, if that has been, if that establishment has their provisional certificate from the Department of Public Health, and if it was in place by July, by July 1 of 2017, then that establishment can sell recreational marijuana and the town can't do anything about it. The town has two, has an option here though. The town can't say, no, we, we're only gonna allow you to sell medical marijuana, but you can't sell recreational. The town's only option is to allow them to sell recreational or to ban everything. So when you think about that, basically what they're saying is there really isn't this distinction anymore between medical and, and recreational marijuana. It's, 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 it's all or nothing. And we don't, some we don't eyebrows. have, I don't, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, John. So. And we don't have any, um, not only do we not have a medical marijuana bylaw, but we also do not have any companies that have been licensed right. to do business in Northborough, either as a medical marijuana dispensary or a medical marijuana cultivator. So we do not, there's nobody on the horizon. Um, there's nobody that's been issued a, a license. So there's. Wait. The point being is that we're not in that position, but if another community had moved forward with licensing a medical dispensary under, under this change in law now, they can sell recreationally mar marijuana, and all the town can do is ban it all or allow it. So, you know, so this idea that you're going to have medical use marijuana facilities, it, it, I, I don't know that that's going to be the case anymore. Uh, Leslie, I have Okay, with that in mind, what is the situation with that company that was going to build a grow facility on Lawrence Street? It's not happening in North. So it's not happening, but what originally was allowing that to happen, and why isn't it happening? Just curious. Kind of lost track of that. Yeah, it's a, a back. We're talking about cultivation center. Yes. A medical marijuana cultivation center yes. in Northboro, that was negotiated with the board mm -hmm. uh, with a host agreement and very clear language that it involved no dispensary at all was right. expressly prohibited. Um, they just couldn't, they just never got the land deal done with the, uh, with the owner of the property, so it's, it's, it's not happening. At this point in time, I don't, again, this is my speculation, uh, you know, just where I sit is I, I don't know who's going to be pursuing medical marijuana anymore. There's no distinction, you know what I mean? It's, Anybody can buy it. You don't need a prescription to use it or to have it. So the distinction of, you know, this is a medical marijuana dispensary versus a recreational dispensary, I think that's just blurred. And again, this is my speculation. This is an, an, this is an opinion from town council, is that, that that distinction is going to, with time, sort of go away. So you have to think about, from, from our standpoint, do we want to, at this point in time, as Kathy said, ban medical, marijuana dispensaries and uh, ban and recreational, nothing prohibits you down the line in the future if somehow you want to revisit the medical, if that is viable in and of itself, you can do that. But right now, it looks like every, it's going the other way. Like I said, if towns explicitly negotiated with host agreements with, with medical marijuana dispensaries and on the legislation, those folks can sell recreational marijuana, that gives you a good sense of where things appear to be heading. Um, this is related. Go ahead and this is related to yes. that, though. Just to follow on to that, so there's nothing funny, any kind of funny grandfathering that would go on with that company that was going to build on Lawrence. No. They say come in and say, actually, we found a spot, and, and uh, okay. They, and they never received any license um, yeah. from the state either. So I it's think so that it's, 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 yeah. today has elapsed when they had to mm -hmm. have had a license in place. Okay. Correct. Yep. Yeah. So, okay. so my concern is with the medical. John, what you're saying is just, it's a theory, it's not a fact that if it was medical, they also can. No, that is it. a fact that if for, for communities that have a, a dispensary that w did go through the registration and was in place at the time, 
that are just medical marijuana dispensaries that they can sell uh, recreational marijuana, that is a fact that, under the law. It's a, a fact from town council. And, the, and it is also a fact that the communities where that has taken place, they cannot say you can't sell recreational, you can only sell medical. All the town can say is we either prohibit everything or we allow everything. That, that is all fact. Okay. My specula part of that speculation on my part is that based on that, I see the, the lines blurring and they're really not being in the future, I don't think there's going to be much distinction between the two because be if no it's legal for everybody, then you, the, the whole concept of it being medical, I think, is okay. It kind of goes away. Jeff? So it sounds like it's almost a moot point. If we uh, opt out of the rec, aren't we by de facto op opting out of the medical? No, I, I don't think so. Um, and again, it, in theory, you, right. you could have someone apply for a medical. Right. Bill. Because, it, because today, um, a medical marijuana dispensary, even though there aren't any, you know, the, the, the time frame has lapsed for when you can apply, for when someone could apply to the Department of Public Health. Um, unless they issue a whole round of licenses, you know, a couple of years from now, who knows? Let me ask it the other way then. Okay. So, you know, what I heard John say was if somebody has a, has been approved for medical, then they can theoretically sell recreation. What you're saying is if they're approved for recreation, they can't theoretically sell medical. Is that? Uh, um, no, no. They they, sell to anybody. Right, because, because there's- there's no legal age? There's really no distinction anymore between recreational and medical. However, the two statutes still do exist, but the recreational is supposed to somehow merge with the medical. We don't know yet how that's going to roll that's, out. That's so that's why we're suggesting if you're if you if you want to, you know, be absolutely sure that there isn't any marijuana being sold in Northboro legally, <laughs> um, you need to you need to. Where you pipe in, chief? You need to prohibit um, recreational and medical. That first March 15th date, uh, March 15th, 2018, that's when the Cannabis Control Commission is supposed to come up with their regulations that sort of fill in all this stuff and let us, and, and you get a sense of where things are going. This is the most screwed up. Yep. It's, Bill? I'd say that we should wrap medical in, into it just to be on the safe side of the bylaw. I mean, my opinion yep. only. Don, did you have a comment? I'm sorry. Nope. Okay. Uh, I'll express the opinion that um, I don't see a distinction at this point between recreation and medical. I don't think I want to leave the door open for recreational intrusion through a medical first, you know, use or something like that. So my leaning would be to um, to to treat both of them right. To to uh, not make the distinction, not attempt to make the distinction uh, between those two. So. Um, are there any other questions from the board about any other topic concerning this agenda? Yeah. Not at the moment. Um, okay. Um, at this point, um, Kathy, if you have no further information to provide at this time, I think the only thing we want to, uh, to state, I guess, is that the planning board has been grappling with this issue and somewhat inconclusively. Uh, they're looking for the board for some guidance as to which way to proceed. Um, I'd like to provide that guidance unambiguously this evening. Um, and I understand the planning board is having a meeting tomorrow night. Yes. At 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, in this room. Yes. So uh, um, if there's no objection from the members of the board, I would like to poll the board members and ask them to express their comments and, and offer their opinion on uh, how you'd like to proceed on this matter and what kind of guidance as a group we think we would like to offer to the planning board. So, Jeff. Well, first I'd like to thank Kathy for making everything crystal clear. <laughs> um, you know, it's, with what we know today, and I think it really became abundantly clear what we don't know, um, you know, I th it makes sense to opt out. This is, uh, you know, if nothing else, it gives us it gives us time while the state, you know, hopefully, you know, irons out the multitude of unanswered questions. I, 
you know, the years that I've, I've sat here, I don't think I've ever seen anything that was quite as convoluted and up in the air as this is. I mean, and we've dealt with some pretty uh, interesting mm -hmm. topics. Um, at least for me personally, there's a lot more questions than there are an answer than there are answers. And you know, I was hoping that tonight, you know, I'd have more answers. And through nobody's fault, I think I have more questions. So I, I think it absolutely makes sense. I think if nothing else, it it gives us. Yeah, you know, it keeps our options open down the road a little bit longer, and so yeah, I would support opting out. Okay, yeah. Leslie. Um, I'm also in favor of opting out. I am vehemently against recreational marijuana and anything related to it. <clears throat> so I I would like to see us do everything we can. I also feel that no pun intended that it should be rolled into one with medical marijuana. Um, I, I do have to say I think there that. are medical benefits to medical marijuana. I have relatives who may potentially get help from it. But I think that it's too vague right now. I think the regulations are unclear and I think if it's something that we can revisit down the road, then that's something we can do once we know how it will be handled by the state, the kind of things that we can put into place in our community what the regulations mean and, and know what kind of controls we have over it. But until that time, it sounds like a bad idea to, to try and separate out the two based on what I'm hearing here. So I would be in favor of, of having those two together and absolutely opting out. So, and thank you also, Kathy. Dawn? It's one of those 4,531 people that voted against it in November. <laughs> I'm still against it. So. My vote technically hasn't changed. And like Leslie, um, I would want to pursue um, opting out of medical, recreational, and all of the marijuana paraphernalia um, things that can be listed. So um, I am certainly in favor of opting out. Okay. Bill? It's my turn. <laughs> yeah, I'm for uh, opting out too as well. I mean, as selectmen and a body of ours, I mean, we're here to <coughs> listen to the voters and the citizens to hear their complaints and concerns. And that's our job to make this community safe and a good place to live. And um, I definitely would like to opt out and put medical, uh, medical marijuana in with recreation and head shops, and everything all into one rolled up. Leslie, is that the right way to put it? <laughs> well, I'm not the expert, actually, but <laughs> I know it's a good pun. <laughs> whatever. But, um, That's all I know. Would you like to say more? <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, as a board, crazy. I think we, uh, well, Jason hasn't really said his opinion as of yet, so yeah, I can't speak for him. But you can put words in my four. mouth. So you're up, Jason. Yes. Uh, yes, um, I'm going to make it unanimous. Um, it seems to me with the uncertainty with the state law, with the utter lack of regulations and any idea what those regulations might turn out to be from the Cannabis uh, Control Commission, um, we have a number of letters received um, at the town offices from many concerned citizens, all unanimously expressing opposition to recreational marijuana and urging us to adopt the opt-out provision. Um, as far as I know, we have not received a single communication in any form for the opposite. So the sentiment of the community as it's been expressed to us uh, to date is quite clear. Mm -hmm. And I think as uh, residents, citizens, voters, parents, taxpayers, I think uh, everyone on this board has exactly the same concerns and considerations that uh, you all have. Um, apart from these technical details that we've already discussed, I think we all uh, in the larger picture have a sense of what we want our community to be, what kind of values we hold, um, uh, the perception that other people have of our community. We're a strong family community, very good school system. We're here to uh, kind of maximize the well-being of, of everyone in town. Um, the, one of the greatest concerns I guess I have when you talk about uh, marijuana shops is, um, well, uh, let me put it this way. Um, I certainly remember the first cigarette I ever smoked. I remember the first beer I ever drank. I remember the first shot of liquor I ever did. And I can honestly say that none of those experiences were pleasant ones. That first experience, the, the, the cigarette, the, 
the beer, the shot, they acted as their own deterrence because they weren't that pleasant. They were an acquired taste, and to acquire that taste usually came about as a result of succumbing to social pressure or peer pressure. Nobody really went out and smoked or drank because it was the most pleasant thing to do on their first experience. They continued to do it because of pressure, and they eventually acquired the taste for it. Um, with marijuana, if you're talking about smoking marijuana, I think you have the same effect, but when you're talking about edible products, it's an entirely different story. You have, you know, cookies, cakes, brownies, candy. Um, these are things you don't have to acquire a taste for. It's, it's already an acquired taste, and unfortunately, it's a taste that's already been acquired by most of our young children. These are the things they're drawn to. These are the things they like. These are the things that taste good. And these are the things that are going to attract them uh, uh, you know, to areas we don't want them, want them going. Uh, the, uh, you know, marijuana has been said to, to be the gateway drug for other harder drugs. Um, it's reaching the point here with edibles where your ordinary cookies and cakes and candies are the gateway drug to marijuana. That's the example it sets. That's the draw it has for young children. So to the extent possible, I think we would like to not have that temptation, not have that lure, not have that draw sitting in the middle of our own town, not in any portion of our town. And I think we uh, are all in agreement that, uh, that we want a full and complete opt-out for all forms of marijuana uh, in the town of Northboro. Um, as far as a process timeline is concerned, I would ask that um, you give the town a little more time to work toward this. I think we're in agreement. We're pulling in the same direction. Um, I hope we've allayed the concern about the Attorney General's 90-day approval period. That is not the period that dictates whether our bylaw takes effect or not, and it doesn't dictate the date on when that bylaw takes effect. That's a very important consideration because that is uh, the consideration that gives us additional time to work with town council to get our language correct, to consult with the attorney general's office if necessary to ensure the language is correct and will be approved, and allows us the time to put in place a full and complete and most comprehensive protections we can for everyone in town. Um, I think that, um, other communities have been quicker to act. To their credit, they've done what they thought is right in their community. I think in our case, we want to benefit from the actions they've taken, from the language they've crafted, with the additional time to see how the law has already played out and changed, even over these last three or four months, and affected the way communities have to act in order to make the appropriate uh, uh, bylaw enactments. Um, I understand the urgency to want to do something and have it on the books. As your selectman, I would pledge to you that I will do everything possible to ensure that that happens in time so that it's in effect and on the books uh, and will not allow any loopholes or anything to allow um, some licensing application to intrude on that. The thing I want to do, though, is take the best advantage of time with the assistance of town council to understand everything we have to address in this bylaw and to ensure that Northborough is in a town that's known for having adopted one of the quickest bylaws. Northborough is known as one of the towns for having adopted one of the smartest bylaws. That's my greatest concern, to have the best possible bylaw on the books to protect our community and to protect our children. And so with that, I think we have a unanimous statement. Leslie, would you like to say something? Yes, I have a question actually for Kathy. This is an in the meantime question. Um, there is an establishment in town that was a restaurant. It was a seemingly or supposedly um, has expressed interest in becoming a head shop. Um, does the current moratorium prevent him from opening as that? Or could he possibly open as that because we have not finalized bylaws? Uh, it, he, he can't. 
He can't. Um, he, okay. he can't sell marijuana related paraphernalia. Okay. Accessories. Um, accessories. Okay. We've we've um asked town council that. Okay. Um and based on the way that the moratorium the the you know temporary moratorium that we have in place based on that um he falls into that and, or and anyone else that okay. would want to pursue this and i just want to point out to to um maybe allay some fears about that that um particular person or at that address has has never come to any staff person um or come before any board right um has not met with any staff um so i know it's being played out on social media mm -hmm. but um yeah. I think it was within the past six months or so, um, um, and actually it was with our prior building inspector, just to give you some time frame, um, that the owner of Spiro's Snack Shack did ask if he could convert, for, if it was allowed by zoning to convert from you know, a restaurant to retail. And the answer is yes, and, and it still is yes. He can do that. That retail is allowed in, in the zoning district that he is in. However, he cannot sell the... Um, the accessories related to marijuana because of the moratorium. Okay, and without the proper permitting, he cannot open, and if he did, it would be shut down immediately by the building inspector until he had gone through the proper process. Yeah, he has to go through, you know, site plan, he has yes. to get a new zoning determination. Yeah. You know, he, there's, he has not even stepped into our process mm -hmm. yet. Okay. So, right. you know, site plan, we have to look at drainage, parking, mm -hmm. you know, access, curb cuts onto Route 20 just like anybody else would mm -hmm. mowing and painting let's throw those in there mowing and painting no yes. bylaw for mowing oh. i hate to tell you uh, uh, another mowing <laughs> uh, boy yeah don't get me started on that one okay I, I just wanted to confirm that that's been talked about quite a bit so thank you very much um i'd like to discuss what next steps the board thinks we need to take um one suggestion i would make is that we draft a very brief memo uh, to the effect that the board is in unanimously in favor of a full opt-out for all forms of marijuana, including accessories, including prohibition of use variants, including medical marijuana. Does that sound correct and agreeable? Yes. And be addressed yeah. to? To the planning board. The planning board. If board. they were seeking guidance, I yes. think the guidance is quite clear. Okay. Um, I also think we've reached a point where we certainly have enough information to be, to be able to make a judgment about the risk of not opting out and the uncertainties behind that versus opting out now, being conservative, seeing how it plays out um, across the state as far as the laws are concerned, how it plays out in communities that choose to allow recreational marijuana, um, see how it plays out in terms of, I mean, we haven't even, <laughs> and it's, in my opinion, not all that relevant. We haven't talked about, you know, the benefit of tax revenue, right? Um, uh, see how that aspect of it plays out because it'll be uh, very interesting to see to what extent the tax revenue of recreational marijuana activities offsets whatever other costs the communities find that they face. So um, uh, toward that end, I guess I would like to make a clear and compelling statement to the planning board that this is the intent of the Board of Selectmen. Do we have a by consensus agreement to bring forward a general bylaw? Yeah. Yep, Jeff, you have a statement? No, I was just going to yep. say, I think the sooner we can get something okay. written and get it before town yep. council mm -hmm. so that they can vet it, you know. And yes. Just so, kind of have that in our quiver. So a um, uh, memo to the planning board for their meeting tomorrow night to know that they have that guidance um, okay. from the board of selectmen. Um, Do you want that to come from, from me or would the board by consensus uh, um, authorize the chairman to approve sure. that memo. Yep. Would that make yep. the most sense? Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, I think we would like um, to at least ask John and town council to begin the process of drafting the suitable bylaws yes. with yep. Kathy's assistance um, uh, and uh, expect to see a draft of that at our next meeting. Yes, Leslie. Is it worth sending a letter to the AG to ask that's the third point I have written. Okay, time to cut. <laughs> they may have heard from other communities, but it yes. certainly can't hurt for them to hear from us as well that we want to know what their thinking is about these dates. Agreed. Um, so, statement to the planning board, direction to 
John and town council to proceed with the drafting of a general bylaw that the board of selectmen will bring forward. Um, inquiry to the attorney general and the cannabis control commission such as it exists at the moment for, uh, um, for their intent or their understanding or their uh, indications of how the moratorium would apply relative to the dates that are currently on the books in the law and uh, what timing communities need to take in order to enact bylaws that will be in effect in time for the uh, for any licensing applications that yeah. would be my, my if I made my suggestion sure. that that would be uh, why don't we have town council make those yes make those inquiries directly yep. that would be the most uh, uh, effective in my opinion most impact. Leslie? I would like it to, to be more official, though, than an inquiry where it's actually a letter that he's sending basically on behalf of the Board of Selectmen. I, I, I just feel that, as opposed to maybe an email where you were just saying, hey, what's the deal? I should give more of a phone call to actually get somebody to talk to us. They, yeah. We can send a letter. The letter will likely be ignored. Maybe as we'll well, though. At least it's filed. It, a little mm -hmm. paper trail. Yeah. Let's see, we tried. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Exactly. Um, at the moment, uh, in consideration of the information we've received, um, I think it's premature to to state exactly how we would proceed other than to state that it's the intent of the board to proceed with a town meeting, whether special or annual town meeting, sufficiently in time to adopt a bylaw that will offer the appropriate protections on this matter. Does that sound yep. correct? Yeah. Yes. Agreement by the board? Yes. Agreement. That's the commitment we make to you. So, any uh, other comments, yeah. questions? I think you've covered it. Good job. Very good. Kathy, thank you very much. We really appreciate your thank assistance. You, Thanks, Kathy. Um, we we'll continue to keep you okay. posted. Well, more than likely, I'll be there tomorrow. Night, so. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, John, thank you and town council for your efforts and continuing work on this matter also. So I appreciate uh, everyone's efforts. It's certainly out of great public interest we want to do the right thing. So. And with that, I think we have completed that item on our agenda. On to reports. Bill. Well, thank you. Very sad passing. Dick Sargent, uh, very, very sad. The town's going to miss him. Uh, he was a great guy with a great personality. Always made me laugh when I saw him. Uh, very, very sad news, and we are all going to miss him. Um, yesterday, I attended Hogtober at Romaine's. It had like a barbecue and crafted beers and wines, and they had a band. They had a huge TV under a tent and stuff, so you could somewhat make out the Patriots game. Uh, so it was a good time, and there was a lot of people there, a lot of young families. They had a bouncy house and stuff. It was, it was, a, it was a good event, so... Anyways, um, Scott had a couple of uh, things for you. Um, somebody had said on Mayflower Road in Northboro, a lot of the branches were hanging down on the um, sidewalk when the kids were walking to school. I don't know if you could take a look at that. And then uh, also somebody on River Street called and said the speed uh, limit sign coming in off of Hudson Street going up river at the bridge. The speed limit sign, it says 35 miles an hour, but it's covered with brush. Okay. I think maybe if we can like move it out a little bit, yep. be great. That ends my report. Thank you, Bill. You Don? Um, I had the opportunity to um, attend the Northbrook High School Alumni Association um, afternoon luncheon. And um, I don't know if everybody knew, but Dick Sargent used to um, chair that. He was chairman of the Northbrook High School Alumni. He wasn't able to be there that afternoon, but they actually voted him as president again um, of the association. Um, he will be greatly missed in the town of Northboro. And I'd like to compliment both the police and the fire departments for the very professional showing and the nice showing that both departments made. And I think it was just a compliment to the town how nicely everything was handled today and yesterday. And on to our property up on Ball Hill that we have an ongoing dispute with somewhat. I'd like to say thank you to um, Representative Gregoire and Naughton, who did send a letter finally in support of um, Harriet Chandler's bill. So, so we're making progress that way. We haven't heard yet back from the committee, but hopefully we'll hear 
favorably back from the committee soon. That concludes my report. Thank you, Don. Leslie? Okay, I just wanted to mention the ninth annual Northboro Helping Hands um, uh, group is running a winter gear drive. Uh, what we need are new or gently used coats, snow pants, and boots, toddlers through teen sizes. Um, and if people could drop things off by November 13th to the rec department, the library, and all schools, including St. Bernadette's, that's very important. Um, one thing in, in addition to being hungry is being cold. So, And the Northboro Food Pantry still is in need. And I did want to mention the fact that uh, Peasley was able to gather together a lot of things for the food pantry, I think, this past week. So thank you very much to them, and hopefully that helps stock up some things. Uh, I also wanted to mention that, mentioned in Fire Chief Parenti's monthly report, is the fact that you were granted accreditation, effective 919-17. And would it be okay with you if I read the last paragraph of that? Okay. Um, the Massachusetts Fire Service Commission granted accreditation to Chief Parenti. On behalf of the Fire Service Commission, I am pleased to inform you that your application package for credentialing was reviewed by the FSC committee and your name was proposed for accreditation at the September 19th meeting of the FSC and approved. You are now accredited to the level of fire chief in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. The date of accreditation is September 19th, 2017 and is valid until December 31st, 2020. So congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for serving Northboro, Chief. We're happy to have you here. And <laughs> the other thing I wanted to mention is in Chief Liver's monthly report, um, something that he was nominated for. And is it all right with you if I read that portion of your report? Paraphrasing doesn't work for me. It doesn't really do justice. So um, on September 13th, I was nominated by the Central Massachusetts Chiefs of Police Executive Board to serve a position on the Central Region Homeland Security Advisory Council. The Central Region Homeland Security Advisory Council provides planning, financial, and technical resources to the Central Massachusetts region. The focus of this organization is to support and facilitate the following activities. Identification of threats and vulnerabilities within the region, plan regionally to protect critical infrastructure and key assets, training first responders and local officials, improve interoperability, multi-jurisdiction exercises, and intelligence gathering and information sharing. So it looks like they have to um, do a background check on you still? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Hopefully it comes out. Right. Uh, yeah, really. Yeah. 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 So we'll keep our fingers crossed on that one. Yeah. Where's, uh, where's Detective Griffin? Is he? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah right. Does he have any uh, comments? Close to the lie on the detective side. He's conveniently not. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So the council is scheduled to vote on, on your approval at their next meeting schedule for uh, November 7th. So congratulations on that. Thank you very much. That is my report. Thank you. Leslie. Jeff. Yeah. I also wanted to mention uh, the passing of Dick Sargent. He was, anyone who knew him, he was probably one of the nicest people you could ever know. He, uh, you know, he always had a smile. He always had a kind word. I don't. Yeah, my daughter was talking about him when she worked at Lowe's probably I don't know, at least 10, 15 years ago. Said he would always come in, ask her how school was. Aww. Yeah, and then when she was on to college, he'd ask her how college was and you know, ask her about you know, chemistry major and just just a really, really nice guy. And you know, he did a lot for the town. He was on the fire department, uh, volunteer. Um, as, as Don mentioned, I, I thought the walkthrough yesterday by the fire department and the police department at the wake was just, you know, it was a really, really nice thing to do. So, you know, thank you to you, you know, both the chiefs and, you know, to, to your guys. It, uh, you know, it had to mean an awful lot to the family and just wanted to, you know, send my condolences out to both the sergeant and the Dowd family. So that concludes my report. Thank you, Jeff. Um, on Saturday, I attended for the first time the Massachusetts Selectmen Association's um, workshop, which covers certain topics that are of interest to uh, selectmen in Massachusetts. Um, it seemed like a good idea to actually go to one of those and see what they had to say. Um, I'm pleased to report that it was uh, a fruitful uh, few hours. I uh, met selectmen from uh, Wellesley, Sudbury, and Barrie, Massachusetts. Um, who all had obviously very different perspectives for the issues that are facing their respective towns. So it was uh, interesting to hear that exchange. 
Also, um, one of the sessions I sat in on was a municipal budgeting session, and I'm pleased to say with the great training I've received in my service to the town, I was able to make some clarifications regarding uh, free cash and use of one-time revenues for one-time expenditures, which um, no one seemed to disagree with, so I guess we're on the right track. So. <laughs> um, I'd also like to mention uh, Jack Sharp, who is stepping down from the library trustees. Jack has been uh, in service to the trustees for quite a long time. Um, always very, uh, um, always a very uh, significant contributor to the work they do and willing to, uh, to participate. Uh, most recently, he was doing some work uh, for some of the technology aspects that the library is investigating. Um, we just appreciate his many years of service and we wish him well. Um, he was just a fine guy and I've enjoyed in my role as liaison uh, to the trustees uh, talking with Jack. So that concludes my report. John? No report. Very good. The next order of business is public comments. Um, may I ask first if there's anyone in the room who has a comment on something other than marijuana? <laughs> <laughs> Hearing none, um, let's proceed with uh, uh, anyone else. Tom Racka? Could you, uh, I'd ask the people who are going to comment for the ease of recording and everything and presentation, could you please come up to the table, uh, introduce yourself, and, uh, and uh, feel free to present. State your name and address for the record, please. Great, good evening. My name is Tom Racka. I'm at 121 Indian Meadow Drive. Uh, first of all, I wanted to thank the Board of Selectmen uh, and your, your leadership. And I, we, uh, um, I think many of the residents, uh, this, is a, this has been an issue that certainly if you wanted to, to galvanize a lot of residents, this is one of the issues that can in this, in this town. There are several, uh, but this certainly is one. And I wanted to uh, personally thank you and also on the, a lot of the people that I work, I talk with about your leadership and your, willing to, your willingness to, to, to state your, what, what your concerns were and state your opinions. I think the, the biggest thing that the residents have is not knowing. And I think uh, the planning board was unclear. Having said that, um, there, you've all also mentioned that there is uh, a lot of uncertainty in the law and what's happening around the state. And so I would, I would um, advise that we are very clear in our direction but also not leave anything to chance. For example, we did have a bylaw for medical marijuana and it failed. What happens if the next bylaw at the town meeting fails? What's our recourse, right? And uh, I think we may have dodged a bit of a bullet because if there was uh, medical marijuana in town, uh, as you stated, when the new bylaws come around, there, there's no distinction. So that would have put us all at risk. So I, I would caution you and advise that we are very diligent and I wouldn't waste as much time uh, in moving forward. I, I would go with urgency. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tim. Good evening. Uh, my name is Tim Kalin. I live at uh, 42 Davis Street. Um, I'm a member of the Northboro Opto Group on Facebook, and as of this morning, we had well over 600 members of our group. Uh, the vast majority of our group, uh, once the opt-out option taken, they are against the um, allowance of, of retail marijuana being sold in the town, um, hence the name Northboro Opt-out. Um, on behalf of the group, I am uh, I am encouraged to finally hear that the Board of Selectmen is going with the opt-out option. Um, that's been a source of angst among our group, uh, what the course of action for the Board of Selectmen is going to be. Um, the one thing that I, that I do hope and the group hopes is that as we move through this process that the Board of Selectmen's um, stance on that does not change. Um, I just bring that up because of the planning board and the undecided votes that were um, said last week. Just want to make sure that as we move through this. Um, as for the opto process, uh, we as a group are anxious about the, the lack of clarity with the timeline um, that, we, that we have to adhere to. Uh, what we ask is uh, we would like to see from KP Law, Northboro Town Council, 
a documented timeline of actions and deadlines that the Board of Selectmen um, and the town administration must, um, must follow to ensure that the town incorporates the necessary articles and bylaws for the town to properly opt out. Um, I know Jason, you had brought that up, but you know, that is something that we would like to see from town council. Um, the timeline is our biggest concern and has raised the most questions within our group. Um, as residents and registered voters, we are disappointed that the process has gotten to the point um, where there is little to no flexibility with the timeline um, for Northboro to opt out of allowing retail marijuana stores. Um, the legislation to legalize marijuana was passed in November of 2016, um, and here we are almost a year later, and this is the first time that it's been brought up by the Board of Selectmen. Um, from what we understand, other towns in the area, including Westboro and Southboro, um, have already taken the action of, of opting out. Um, so we know that, that that was an option that, that could have been taken since November. Um, the lack of action, lack of communication, and lack of urgency shown by our town government is what has given rise to resident-driven groups like the Northboro opt-out group. Um, we ask that once a timeline is received from um, the town from KP Law, that that information is shared with Northboro residents, including our opt-out group, in a swift and transparent manner. Uh, we would expect that this timeline would be strictly followed and accelerated when possible so that the citizens of Northboro don't need to execute a petition for a special counsel on our own. Um, the members of our group are aware of where this issue stands today, and we will continue to update our members on the progress being made. Um, ultimately, as a group, we do want to, you know, work with the, the Board of Selectmen. Um, you know, much like Tom said, we, we appreciate all the work that, that the town and the Board of Selectmen do, um, all the effort that you guys put into making Northboro what it is and in, in the wonderful community that it is, and ultimately what our concern is just making sure that, that Northboro stays that way. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> sure. <clears throat> Carolyn Guarino, uh, Four Park Street. I just wanted, because um, Kathy had mentioned something about the um, the 90 days that the state has the 90 days to review all the bylaws, which we which you asked for clarification on. But what also, what I heard you say was that um, um, if they're going to say whether they approve or disapprove the bylaw, and if the state doesn't approve it, then we revert back to the old zoning bylaws. So I don't know that That's that was clear the second time you asked. Uh, correct, right. It's subject to the AG's approval. Mm -hmm. um, I would emphasize that we're not crafting this bylaw in a vacuum. We're working with town council. And to some extent, town council will be um, having a dialogue with the AG to ensure that the bylaw that we craft is not at risk of being disapproved. I think that's a very important point. Oh, it sounds great. Your discussion was so thoughtful. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. appreciate it. I, we are trying, in this meeting at least, to provide the clearest information about the bylaw approval process and the timeline we need to follow to execute a bylaw. The thing we don't want to do is push that process and execute it prematurely when we have time available to us to get a meeting scheduled, to take a vote in time, and up to that point, have the benefit of whoever has preceded us and whatever other developments may arise and whatever we need to do with town council and consultation with the AG's office to, as I said, put in place the language of a bylaw that gives us the fullest possible protection. And I'll repeat it once again, I don't want Northboro to be known as being one of the towns that adopted the quickest bylaw. I want Northboro to be known for having adopted the smartest bylaw. That's not going to happen in three or four weeks. That's going to take, you know, a little more time than that. And I understand we still have, we have still some unresolved dates that we're going to be asking about. We do have unresolved yeah. dates, but, you know, certainly the board is not unaware of no, what certain deadlines right. are, and we're certainly going to take every mm -hmm. step to ensure mm -hmm. that the town crafts and votes a bylaw in time to have it in effect before any possible licensing 
of recreational marijuana facilities can take place. Mm -hmm. That's my pledge to you as selectmen and chairman of this board. I'm sure that's the sentiment of the board members tonight as they've expressed unanimous support for opt out. And that's the message we're sending to the planning board that this is the direction the board of selectmen want to go in and this is the direction we want the town to go in. You know, tune in tomorrow night and see what, uh, what that tells you, so. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much, you. I appreciate it. John? I just want to make a, a, a comment regarding the timeline, that question of a timeline. There's no more information to come with a timeline. So the timeline is April town meeting of 2018 or a special town meeting if it looks like we need one. That's the timeline. There's no more information to come. We're asking for more clarification, but that's the timeline. And what the chairman just committed to is we're either going to handle that annual town meeting or if we get an indication that that's not going to do it, then we call a special town meeting. If the Board of Selectmen calls a special town meeting, then it's about a, a, about a four or five week process at max. It's two week notice, and we need time to back up from that, to print postcards, to get them mailed out. Uh, that's your timeline, guys. That's all there is. There's no more information that's going to come from there. I just want to be clear about that. The other thing is um, just this November 16th versus now, you know, we just got this clarification, this rewrite of this bylaw from, uh, from town council. There was nothing more that we could have or should have done before now. Um, in fact, the comment was made is, you know, some of these towns, you know, that, that, that moved ahead. We chose a moratorium, so everything's on pause until things develop and then we can make an informed decision. Some folks went ahead and we talked earlier about some of those folks that went ahead and they allowed medical marijuana and now they're facing recreational marijuana and their option is to ban everything. So when you look back at the record, I think everything that was done was done thoughtfully to allow us to have a good policy discussion with good information and make a good decision. So um, uh, and, I think we're right on target. And, and to that end, the first step was the moratorium that was voted Absolutely. at town meeting last spring. It's not as though a year has elapsed right. with no action at all. I just want to be clear. And that's the efforts of the planning board and that's the vote of the people in the town to pursue that path to try to provide us more time to understand the implications of the law and to provide the proper protections. So. Right. Uh, any other comments? Would you like to comment? Yes. yes. Sure. Thank you, everybody. Oh, sorry, Keith Martinek, 16 Hemlock Drive. Um, Everybody has talked about transparency and wanting to know what's happening and how we proceed on our timeline and where we are in driving towards our, sounds like, unanimous goal. Is it a possible to get an update each month when you have this meeting to see where we're at, sure, what's certainly. been accomplished, what's outstanding, what you might have fallen behind on, and what we need to do to get back on track so that there is that sure. continued transparency I, I, as we move I think forward? It's, I think it's fair to say that we don't expect to fall behind. What may happen is that some of the information we're seeking won't be forthcoming right. and we'll have to make a decision how to act based on the lack of that information. I don't think it's going to be a case of us falling behind on any particular schedule or timeline. It's just a case of asking the questions, getting the fullest possible information and to the extent some of that information isn't available to us in a reasonable amount of time prior to when we think we need to act um, relative to the deadlines that the state law specifies we'll take the appropriate action to ensure that uh, we, we uh, have something in place and, and are protected great. from any eventuality. I, I think that would be great. I, it'll yeah. be really appreciate. I think I know a lot of folks here yeah. are going to probably continue to come here every month I, and look I, for an update. And I, I, invite you to, I invite you to do so. I invite you to ask questions. Um, I would ask you if you do have any other concerns or questions, feel free to submit them through Diane Wackel. Um, at the email address. Uh, you can submit them to me directly if you like, um, or any other board member here is willing to receive uh, don't, comments. Don't, yeah. don't wait for a selectman's meeting. Yeah. Sure, yeah. yeah. I don't think we will, but yeah. I think the people that come to this meeting or they will look for information to come sure. out right. after each monthly meeting, it would be good if it's at least a standing and agenda yeah. item where you provide an update, even if it's brief. And we'll be happy to do that. In fact, our next scheduled meeting is November 6th. Um, the planning board will have had their meeting um, We've instructed the town administrator and town council to proceed with the drafting of bylaw language, which I would hope to see the first draft of at that meeting to give us a sense of what the language will look like. And we still have, through this point forward, plenty of time to get a special town meeting called if needed, um, if we don't have a uh, clearer indication as to the effect of the moratorium. Um, I, I do want to say, though, um, uh, it greatly concerned me to see 
um, a process or a timeline that was proposed based on what I consider to be a misunderstanding of the effect of the AG 90-day approval. It's important for people who are pursuing this topic to have a very clear understanding of the law and a very clear understanding of what dates are effective and what timelines are needed, okay? That's important information to be communi communicated to the entire community and we may need to be sure to get that right and take action on the appropriate timeline, as I say, to give us the fullest possible protection, <clears throat> not the fastest possible protection. I just want to emphasize that point. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Yes, please. Hi, I'm Carrie Martinek. I'm also at 16 Hemlock Drive. I um, thank you for the vote to opt or the consensus to opt out. I think that's great, and I'm thankful that um, the residents acted in the way that they did. And as Tom mentioned, really came together in this issue. It's really nice to see people come together um, on these types of things to have a safe, nice community for all of us. I think that's the goal we all have. Um, I just wanted to point out, thank you for clarifying the date as well, the April 1st. There was a lot of angst over that. I'm sorry, the 90 days, there was some angst over that. But two other areas of angst that would be great, I know that you're working on getting these answers, but um, KP Law does mention that some of their advice is contrary to what the Attorney General, Assistant Attorney General had said in that session on October 3rd. So I think there's some angst there, which is in terms of whether or not the moratorium would hold. So to whatever extent we can get that information and share it with people. So um, the good thing about Northboro Opt Out is that now we have a forum to really share information and we want to share the right information. So to whatever extent we can correct and provide updated information would be great. That's exactly what we want to get out there. So if the AG says, you know what, the moratorium, we absolutely agree, will hold, that would be something that would be uh, a great bonus to put back out there to everybody. It's a, it's a good forum to be able to communicate sure. um, a bit like that. and. Um, I think t someone, I think it was Tom that also mentioned the planning board, that, that did cause angst. So that'll be nice tomorrow to, to find out um, how that group is coming along and, and to be able to communicate that as well. Um, to whatever extent we can communicate information to this group and beyond, uh, we can certainly help with that. And I hope that we can work together on that. Sure. If I could mention, um, because this happened to me, <laughs> um, the, the whole notion of social media and the participation of town um, elected and appointed officials participation in that media is a shaky area for us to be on only because um, it's unclear to any one of us how many other members of our board or committee might also be on that media any comments we make in that forum potentially could be called into question as deliberation outside of an open meeting uh, and a violation of open meeting law so um, as it happened um, with the opt-out uh, and the Northboro Opt Out uh, Facebook group, I myself was added to that group um, by a well meaning neighbor, which is fine, I understand, and I'm sure the neighbor didn't understand that the invitation itself automatically added me to that group. Um, when I discovered that I was added, I did post a disclaimer or disclosure on the site to explain, to alert people that I was there because I didn't know if they wanted to be talking to me <laughs> or hearing what they were saying. Um, uh, but I also wanted to explain the limitations of my ability to participate in that forum and, and to discuss matters with the community that I, you know, we hadn't really uh, fully discussed in an open meeting with the members of the board. So there are re some restrictions there. Um, I tried to be very cautious um, in, in that kind of forum because you never know at any time how many other of your board members might also be uh, participating. Um, and I would ask all <coughs> members of all committees and boards in town to be mindful of that and to exercise the same caution. Um, I think we're working toward the same goal, but for anyone who's an elected or appointed official on one of these boards, they need to be careful about how they're conducting their business and where they're conducting their business because if they're found to be in violation of open meeting law, it could call into question any official votes or actions they're taking as a member of their board. We don't want to jeopardize the process through that kind of uh, flaw, if you will, okay? So um, I certainly appreciate the work that all of the, um, the community has done to produce this website to make people aware of the issue. Um, 
and I think it's important going forward as we continue through this process that there's some communication channel uh, to everybody to keep them aware. Um, I just want to be sure um, that any information posted there, um, if you have any doubts about it or uncertain about it, please inquire or check with the town to be sure that any, all the factual information concerning the process and everything is accurate so that everyone who's seeing that is benefiting from the same information. Good. Uh, Jeff? Yep, just to add to that point that Jason made, you know, I was on, on the site, um, added to it. Um, you know, it, again, I'm kind of piling on here, but there's, I'm not normally that quiet. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, a lot of people will tell you. Um, but the reason, as Jason said, you know, we have to be very careful. You know, anything that's uh, you know, going to be up for a vote or up, up for discussion, there are people out there that would love to just jump on it and say, hey, it's a violation of open meeting law. So it's, it's not that we don't care. It's not that we're not interested. Mm -hmm. Trust me, there's a lot of things out there that I would love nothing more than to jump in on. But so far, you've got to be careful. So thank Did you. Did you tell them to leave the group? You want to say on the record, did you leave the group or are you still on it? I'm still on it. I'm okay. just I'm mute. Just okay. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll say for the record, only. I'm still on it for the purpose of understanding the concerns of the citizens who exactly. are on there and, and wanting to cool. rather be in the loop and hear the information. I won't be able to participate or offer any comment in that forum. So. Thank you. Exactly. Leslie? Yeah, and, and actually just the same point is I was also at it, and, and that's fine, but that's a quorum of our board. <laughs> so right. we have to be very, very careful. Very and I, I as well would love to jump in too. So whatever I say is, is very, um, providing the agenda, for example, but not saying anything oh, about it, that kind of thing. So we're, we're definitely, unfortunately, kind of limited. But I just wanted to make that point, so we have to be careful. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? No. You're, you're uh, all set? Yep. yep. Okay. Any other comments, uh, questions from the community? Hearing none. Okay. Thank you all very much. We appreciate your attendance here. Appreciate your concern on this matter. Um, we're trying to do the right thing. We hope something we've done here tonight has helped to allay those concerns and uh, we'll make progress going forward. So, yep. thank, thank you, you all. Here. Continuing new business. There's more meeting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Now. No, 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 no. It's just getting wow. good. <laughs> You're missing the exciting stuff. That's it. Uh, designation of the board's Thank representatives you. to the White Cliffs Committee. Um, John, would you care to? Uh, uh, sure. At your last meeting, uh, you were provided with uh, a memo uh, regarding the makeup of the White Cliffs um, Reuse Committee, and uh, uh, you approved the. Uh, the uh, membership of that, which included uh, someone, a, a member of the Board of Selectmen. So we're hoping this evening that you would make that appointment to the committee uh, from your body. Uh, we are, have received, and we continue to receive information, the appointments from the CPC and the Historic District Commission. So we're hoping we can get uh, the Selectmen's appointment this evening and, um, and uh, hopefully schedule a meeting soon. Okay, very good. Do we have uh, a volunteer? We do. We have a volunteer. <laughs> yeah. right. I second. Glutton for punishment. I second right the in. motion. Are there any other volunteers? Uh, by agreement, then, Bill uh, Bill will serve as a representative of the Board of Selectmen. Yes. The and Christian. I'll come back and report in a timely fashion on Great. the events. Thank Excellent. you, Bill. Or the updates. Thank You're you very welcome. much, Bill. Thanks. Uh, execution of cemetery deeds, 1028, 1029, 1030, and 1031. Mr. Chair. I move the board vote to execute cemetery deeds 1028, 1029, 1030, and 1031 as presented. Second. Moves and seconded in discussion. Hearing none, all in favor. Very good, thank you. Any other business to come before the board? No other business this evening. No other business. Do I have a motion? Motion to adjourn. Second. Moved and seconded, all in favor? We are concluded. Thank you all very much. Thank you.